Action. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hi guys, uh, well, my name is Renata, my group is Ale and Dani. So our chosen company for this uh, subjective is my food bag. Oh, I use this now. <laughs> so I'm talking about the recruitment, pro oops. <laughs> recruitment process and performance appraisals. So about the recruitment process, uh, it has been created uh, for the company finds the right uh, candidate for field of vacancy that have in the company. And we have some steps that the company can uh, follow to, to achieve this, uh, this right candidate. So the first one is the company needs to identify what she needs, what it needs. Like, oh, I need the, the uh, one person to work in a financial uh, department. So they need to know uh, what is their need and then prepare the job description. So it's like the person needs to know how or what they are gonna do. Uh, and the, the third phase is like search for an employee. It can be like by, or just like promote someone or hire a new one. And then get an interview with, if it's a new one and then offer the job if, this, if you choose this candidate and it's good for the company. And we have two types of recruitment process, which is internal and external process. The internal process is when the company promotes the, uh, oh, I forgot the name, the employee, <laughs> uh, or just change the position. For example, uh, the receptionist for assistant, or maybe the, the, the staff for the manager, something like that. And the, the external one is to hire a new person. So about the training. The training, part, um, the training is important because the employee needs to know uh, why they are going to do. And like they, they want to be like good for the company, not just being good at what they do, but what is the goals of the company. Uh, because they need to come along with the goals of the company to achieve it. So otherwise the company was going to do like not good. And yeah, they, the, the employees need to be aware of the company's purpose. And the, the next uh, step is like to introduce the, the new uh, employee for the, the workplace because they need to know like, oh, this is my supervisor or uh, I have to follow him. I, I need to like, if something happened, I, I, uh, who I can, I'm going to talk about. Uh, so, and then it's important to meet the employee. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and um, the CEO of my food bag, Kevin uh, Bory. So it's well known to be a good leader and be very accessible to the staff. So uh, anyone can talk to him. Like Alice said before, like uh, he goes to the company and then he talks to each employee or uh, go to each department, or not every day, but sometimes like every week. So they can, he can see what's going on with the, the company and then like, oh, the, we have a problem here, how can we fix that? And then it's good because sometimes uh, when it's vertical, uh, extra church, the company may just like hear the, the top of the pyramid and not the staff one, but, but maybe the staff one has like a good idea about the company or, or how can they do to improve uh, the company's goals or how to achieve it quickly. Uh, so now I will show you a video of uh, Kevin because they say why it's important they have the purpose and uh, the, the leaders and the CEO go to the, to the company and have this feedback from the, uh, the employees. learned about it here that would be useful to CEOs and companies that haven't yet got that no, purpose exactly. statement clear. Probably the value that it brings, how it brings people together. So you see it in your employee engagement, you see it in the way people act and behave, even those micro decisions that happen every day, every minute of every day, they're all going to be more or less aligned around getting in the right direction. Do you think purpose is necessary. I, I wouldn't go as far as saying they won't survive in the future, but, but I think they could perform a lot better. 
that people are aligned around a purpose which they feel good about. It's not to say you couldn't be successful without a, you know, going back to the old days of saying, you know, our purpose is to have a return on, on capital of 20%. When, but I don't think too many people are going to get super excited about that these days. Do you think it takes a different type of leader from what might have been a good leader in the past? I think probably if I think back to the early part of my career and even business school, it was, uh, it was a lot about um, managing by objectives and getting the strategy right. And at, at Stanford, there was a, a real balance of the strategy part of business and the people and culture part of business and how managing or well, leading for strategy and leading for culture, the outcome was performance. And, and the, the two were so inextricably linked. When did you uh, this one feels like when he goes to the company and then talk to the employees. Well, I guess leadership is something that creeps up on you even when you're in school and you're, you're involved in sports teams and those sorts of things. But I guess in business, probably mid-career, I guess, when I, mean, I started to lead more people. So this is our development kitchen. Recipes and menus are developed here. Uh, everything's tested here, yeah. and we we even have our own photographic studio. Do you want to have a look? Yeah, I'd love to. Okay. Is there a particular moment where you saw yourself as a leader that you would have called yourself a leader? Uh, I think it might have been at a point at um, what was called New Zealand Dairy Foods, now Frontier of Bradness, where mm. I became the general manager of the fresh. Yeah, it's the internet. Sorry, but I haven't to that. But after that, yeah. he goes to the employee and ask. It. Uh, if they are confident or if are they happy with the company, if working there, if they have any ideas or any suggestions to make. Um, and about the performance appraisals, is the method of the manager, the, uh, of the manager, the performance of the employee. So this is about the feedback or the, uh, when the, he goes to the company and talk to the employees. And we have some types of uh, appraisals which is comparing attributes, behavior, and results. Uh, comparison in the com uh, is when the company compare the jobs with the uh, one employee to other. Attribute is when the company extend the capacity of the employee solving problems or in, uh, help them to engage, uh, work in a team, and communication. Uh, and behavioral is the way uh, uh, of the employee must follow because it's like, what they, he has to do, and result is to motivate and encourage the employee get a promotion in order to higher uh, the product level. And my feedback was attribute and results as I could analyze. Uh, it's impo important for them, the employees are being along with the company's mission and vision and align the employee's attitudes with the company's goals, get the employee close to the supervisor, and maximize the performance along with the objectives of the company. So it's, it's, why, uh, it's what Kevin is doing now. Like go there and talk to them and like see if the feedback is good or <laughs> needs to change anything. <coughs> and now about the feedback that was uh, I show you guys. Uh, it's like know how, where, uh, how well their job is and it identify any problem. It is one way of monitor the su success of the company and also if you need to like increase the salary or maybe reduce or maybe change the position or give a promotion and it's that's all for today. <laughs>